Good morning, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to talk about big data and uh, whether big data is a big deal. Now, if you look at the press and if you look online, then very, very clearly big data must be a big deal. I was at my hotel when I came in last night, and I googled big data, and I got more than a billion hits, which is more than almost any other term that I could think of except one, which I'm not going to mention on stage. <clears throat> and, and to be clear, big data is a big deal in many ways. But a key problem is we talk so much about the data, and I'm not sure that the data is what makes things a big deal. The other thing that amazes me is everybody talks about big data as if it's a new thing. But in reality, it's not. Sam Walton, who founded Walmart in 1962, actually pioneered the use of large-scale data sets and analytics to improve the business. And I wanted to take you through kind of the story of how big data came to be. It all started with this guy, Gordon Moore, who in 1965 formulated Moore's Law, which basically says computer chips are going to be ever faster, which led us to this. A PlayStation has the same amount of computing power as a military supercomputer in 1997. For those of you who have a smartphone, you carry around more computing power than the whole NASA had at its disposal when they put a man on the moon for the first time. For a long time, this led to ever more increasingly uh, computers. But a few years ago, the paradigm shifted. We went from a paradigm of trying to build faster single chips into computers, and instead started focusing on dispersing chips into smaller devices. So think about these. All of these things are intelligent in their own way. A modern plane generates about 10 terabytes of data for every hour it's in flight. There's a tree in Brussels that has more than 20,000 Facebook friends. <laughs> San Francisco installed magnetic sensors between 8, or below 8,200 parking spaces to try and understand how do people park. Now, consultants and, and analysts refer to this as the sense economy. And the sense economy is really what drives a lot of these things that we're discussing. Because what happens with the sense economy is everything gets intelligent and you have microprocessors embedded in every device that you have. And so data goes digital. And when data goes digital, something very, very profound happens. First of all, data gets much simpler to acquire. When I started out doing data warehousing, as big data was called many, many years ago, actually the single biggest obstacle we had in the project was getting to the right kind of data. Now it's almost impossible to stop the flow of data. What is also happening is the cost of data is going down dramatically. So the cost of acquiring data, the cost of getting data in, the, and the cost of analyzing data is going down dramatically. And of course, you get abundant uh, volumes of data. What's also happened is because all of these devices now become intelligent, devices that could only generate data by printing out reams of it now suddenly generated digitally. And this means that data becomes much more complex. You have web data, you have very complex scientific data, all of this which is not rows and columns, which makes it much, much harder to analyze. The unfortunate thing is, because we get so much data, and because we get all these new types of data, everybody thinks that big data is actually about the data. But I believe that if we only focus on the data in the big data story, we're missing the point. Because big data is not only about data, Big data is about what I call big data technologies, a set of technology components that enable new ways of running businesses, running governments, running organizations of any kind. These are web, it's mobile, it's sensors, it's large databases, whether they're relational or non-relational. And this is really what big data is all about. Why? Think about this. If you look at any environment that an organization operates in, today, transparency is relatively low. It's very easy for government to fudge numbers so that nobody really understands how the money is being used. It's very, very hard for a supply chain manager to understand where inventory is. The perspective, how people measure success, happens at a very macro level. Decision making is mostly guessing. Some are very good at guessing, and it's getting better, but still. And communication to your stakeholders is still mostly one way. Big data technologies will change all of that. You'll get to an extreme level of transparency. You'll get to a nano perspective. You go from guessing to experimenting and communicating with your stakeholders 
goes from one way to a two way thing. So let me just take you through a few of those. Nano measurement, this is Eric Brynjolfsson from MIT. He's written profusely about big data over the last couple of years and he participated in the McKinsey report. So what he talks about is every time there's been a revolution in measurement, we've seen a revolution in how society goes about different things. It used to be medica medical or manufacturing and now it comes to management. Let me give you an example. So this is a website and all the data scientists that I talk to talk a lot about web data and all the things you can do. The brilliant thing about a website is once your customer arrives on your website, there's no limit to all the things you can learn. This is from one of our partners called Speedtrap, who basically are able to, to discern anything that happens on the website. Where do you come from? How long do you stay on the website? Do you hover over a movie? Do you finish the movie? Or do you move on? Do you click on something? When and how do you abandon? And this is all very, very good because it allows companies that are on the web to tailor what they want to do when they meet with a customer. But the interesting thing about big data technologies is in a few years we'll be able to do exactly the same in the physical environment. Think about it. You will all be tracked because you have GPS in your phones. Video cameras are going digital, which means now you can basically feed the data directly into a computer. And through all of these big data methodologies, you can actually analyze what happens in the store. How many people stop in front of the promotion? How long do they wait? Do they pick up an item? Do they put it in the basket or do they put it back? All of this can be seen from this kind of video feeds. Markets and organizations will change because large data sets that are effectively analyzed will create very, very transparent environments. Inside an organization, this means that management will be able to understand exactly where is value generated and where is value destroyed. Where are the inefficiencies? Who are the stars? Who are the dogs? But this is also a boon for consumers because this also means that as a consumer, I have always been on the bad side of transparency because whenever I went to a store, it was always so that I knew less about the market than the, than the operator, the retailer. Now, I can instantly look up the price of any product anywhere in the world and compare that to the store that I'm in. Transparency will force huge changes, not only in business, but also in government, I believe. I agree with the previous speaker. There is this notion that magically everything will change. It won't. But combine, combined with this, the ability to talk back, this will have a profound impact. There's a small bakery in Copenhagen that last year got into a lot of trouble because they hired, uh, they hired uh, younger people to stand in, in the stores and, and offer their cupcakes. And basically what happened was they had a very onerous contract. And, and sort of from a legal perspective, they didn't treat their people very well. One of the, one of the people who worked for them basically put out a, a criticism on Facebook and this got picked up. And within a week, their Facebook page got completely inundated with criticism. And in the end, the guy who owned it sold it because there was just too much problem. Polman, the CEO of Unilever, famously said, if they can bring down the government of Egypt in six weeks, they can bring us down in 20 seconds. And decision making will dramatically change. Big data technology, so not only the analytics, but the whole set of technologies that I spoke about earlier, will allow managers to go from kind of guessing to experimenting. You will actually be able to make large scale control groups and say, if we do this, if we change the price, if we change the color, if we change the size, what does it mean? How do customers react? And this will be a huge change. So what does it all mean? Data is widely available. What is scarce is the ability to extract wisdom from it. This is Hal Valerian, the former data scientist of Google. Well, as a parent, one of the things I've noticed is mathematicians are suddenly sexy. All of those of you who have kids going to school, tell them to study math. I believe 20 years from now, as languages was a critical component for my generation, Mathemat mathematics will be a really, really key skill for my son and my daughter. And this is a big change, at least where I come from in Denmark. The other thing is there are organizational implications. This is Jan Carlson. He used to be the CEO of Scandinavian Airlines. 
And what he said was, if you don't give information to your people, they can't take responsibility. But if you give information to your people, they have to take responsibility. And not only that, contrary to many opinions, most employees, whether they're profit or non-profit, government or private sector, actually wants to do the best. And by spreading information out across the organization, they will make better decisions for the greater good of all of us. So, Pablo Picasso, times of turbulence are the most exciting times because everything changes. This is why I think big data is a big deal. Big data, not focusing on the data alone, but focusing on all of the technologies that enable and accelerate big data as a phenomenon is a disruptor. And whenever something disruptive happens, things start to change, which is why times of turbulence is really what this is all about. In the handouts, I've given a, a list of reading that I use to study when I, when I go out and prepare for customer meetings. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>